Hello and welcome again to this edition of Florida Internet and Television's Fi TV. I'm your host, Brad Swanson. We are once again coming to you just a few blocks from Florida's capital. I am joined today by Troy Kinsey, reporter with Bay News 9, covers the Capitol. He's also the president of the Capitol Press Corps. Troy, welcome. Great to be back, Brad, in the house of Florida Internet and TV. All right. It's been well, a long time. Yes, it's, it's been About at least a week and a half. A week right? and a half, right? Well, we're, <laughs> we're just trying to keep everyone coming through, keeping everybody who watches the process up to date. But, but, but of course, we're we're no uh, Capitol Press Corps, so uh, we'll, we'll we'll turn our viewers well, you. towards that, your uh, feeds. So um, let's jump right in, right? So uh, we've got Capitol, um, we've got the Capitol that's been overtaken by the Parkland shooting, and yeah. rightly so. I mean, you've got kids who've come up here, they've expressed their opinions, and now you've got packages getting released that address some of those issues. Where is the Capitol with yep. and after? The, the Parkland activity. Well, to your point, I mean, this issue has moved at light uh, speed evolution over the past couple of weeks. Amazing to think that we were here on Tuesday night uh, doing that Sanctuary Cities debate, and then within 24 hours, the gun rights issue had overtaken the debate at the Florida Capitol. You don't hear any talk about Sanctuary Cities now. Right. Um, and so we saw what happened. You know, we saw an outpouring of concern mm -hmm. uh, about Florida's uh, gun laws. Uh, we had about, uh, I want to say, between five and 6,000 people at the Capitol last week rallying in support. Veterans of, said it's, some of the, it's one of yeah. the biggest marches they've ever seen. You know, I was speaking to Rick Flagg, who, as you know, is a veteran on the Capitol Press Corps, uh, has been covering the Capitol since the early 70s, mm -hmm. I believe. And he said, I've, I haven't seen this many cameras here since the 2000 recount. Wow. So you have to go back a pretty long way uh, to see the amount of a, you know, worldwide attention, frankly, that, that has been focused on Tallahassee. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the big question is, well, what will come out of this process? We have a, a gun violence prevention package that's been proposed, but you've got two key elements that the survivors um, and the parents uh, and the teachers uh, of uh, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High say have to be in it and, uh, that are not in it right now. And that would be an assault weapons ban. Uh, and they want to see a measure that would allow teachers to carry guns on campus. Certain qualified teachers, um, uh, you know, uh, qualify as law enforcement officers right. to do so. They don't want to see that because they, they argue that would lead to more gun violence uh, and not less. So right. this debate is a long way from being over. But keep in mind, we've got about what? A week right. and a half left in the session. Right. Well, well, you know, and of course, you, you know, anyone that knows this legislature, you've got probably a stronger philosophical side that is identifying with the Second Amendment and probably, um, you know, advocating for, you know, uh, citizenries, uh, the citizenry having some function, be it the teachers, to, to protect the students. So we'll see how that all shakes out. We'll stay tuned for your reporting on that. So, all right. So, 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 so outside of that, and obviously it's been huge. What other big issues uh, are moving or aren't moving? What, what, yeah. what died as a result of it? Talk to us. Well, how about this? How about texting while driving as a primary offense within, I believe, a week uh, of the session beginning? Sorry, I was texting while interviewing. Wait, sorry, well, sorry, you know, sorry, Bra sorry. Well, it, Brad, it's legal. You can do it, right? It's not a primary offense. That is true. That is true. Um, so Speaker Corcoran, within a week, I believe, of the session opening, had decided to throw his weight behind this concept right. of making it a primary offense, as you know, back in 2013, a law passed mm -hmm. uh, that makes it currently a secondary offense. So you've right. got to be pulled over for speeding, for example, to right. be ticketed for texting while driving, too. Right. Uh, it looks as if uh, this concept uh, is a non-starter. Uh, here in the final two weeks of the session because you've got these um, you know, pro-personal liberty Republicans and, and, you know, quite a few Democrats, too, who are concerned about, uh, A, your phone being searched uh, for your history so that, uh, so that law enforcement can right. prove that you were texting, uh, and B, uh, the potential for racial profiling. And so while the bill has been moving in the House, it's been hung up, hung up, hung up in the Senate. Rob Bradley has said, I'm not confident in uh, putting this on the agenda uh, in my committee. And so it looks as if, uh, if, if the current trend continues, it's not going to pass. Yes. Right. So, so texting while driving, obviously, typically in any other year, would have huge support by MAD and everybody else, just anyone that, that's a driver. And it does. Kind of it issue. does have that support. You're right, right about I'm that. I'm sorry. It still has yes. a support. It's just it's the wind in its sails that uh, kind of ran out due to, due to some other issues in the Capitol. Which is very atypical because, you know, generally when you have legislative leaders get behind an issue, right. 
it passes. Right. Uh, that's not happening this go around. Yeah. So okay. So so as we look at that issue, and you look at um, you know the, the the capital right now is in budget mode, right? So yeah. so. 24 hours ago, actually over the weekend, everyone was asking the question, are we going to extend session? Are we going? But then suddenly the leadership announces, hey, we made some headway. We're going into budget. What happens next? Well, you tell me, right? Um, I don't think anybody <laughs> knows what's going to happen next because we've got, obviously, we, we, we have a discrepancy between the House and the Senate. Mm -hmm. You've got a much bigger budget uh, in the Senate, which is not unusual. But, uh, you know, in a year where uh, state revenue has been generally lean, mm -hmm. and we don't have as much money to go around, I think it's going to be much more difficult for the two sides to come together. And then you have this overarching issue of, uh, you know, how to pay for this gun violence prevention package. We don't know what the price tag will be uh, right. exactly as of yet. Uh, we do know Governor Scott has agreed, in principle at least, to whittle down the size of his tax cut package uh, to pay for that gun violence prevention package. But the final numbers, I think, are a fair ways off, and it wouldn't right. surprise me uh, if uh, if we don't have a special session, I think we might have an extended session to deal with these budget issues. Okay, so let's pause and and while everyone's looking at the legislative session and paying attention to that, they're glancing at the political track here, right? And so as we start to look to the elections, where do you see that shaping up? Just in general, let's start with the governor's race and work our way through the cabinet. Well, I think the session and the election environment go hand in hand, Brad. I mean, that's a, that's that's a big reason I think politicians run for office so they can get elected, come up here and go in front of the cameras on the House and Senate floors or in the governor's office. Um, and, 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 you know, certainly uh, I think we've, we've all realized this gun violence issue is going to become a big one on the campaign trail as well. Uh, governor Scott, I think, is in kind of a tricky situation here, tricky position, because he knows he's, he's got to do something about uh, gun violence, but at the same time, he's been a steadfast advocate of the Second Amendment. So you've got, you've got that dynamic going on right now in the U.S. Senate race. Now we're all assuming Rick Scott is going to run for the U.S. Right. Senate. And before that, the big issue right. was Puerto Rico in that in that race. I mean, for the U.S. Uh -huh. Senate. I mean, that was the huge issue that people were trying to hang their hats on, and how, you know who best dealt with it, and things like that. What else? What other issues do you see coming? Well, up although to your point race? about Puerto Rico, there has been conflicting evidence about how uh, potent the Puerto Rican, uh, the displaced Puerto Rican vote will be. Right. Uh, right. in this election cycle because, yeah, we've had many of them come over here. I believe more than a quarter uh, of a million displaced Puerto Ricans right. who have come over here in the wake of Hurricane Maria. But many of them have just moved on, have traveled up to New York, for example, uh, have left the state. So we don't know how many of them will register to vote in Florida. Okay. So that's that's on the back burner. Um, and, and, you know, and, and frankly, the other big issue uh, this cycle is going to be, well, um, what's the national? Uh, political mood like. Right. Uh, will this be a midterm election year benefiting Democrats? If so, I think you're going to see a lot of Republicans on the campaign trail in Florida temper a lot of their positions on many of these conservative issues. Right. Okay, so let's go down the track. Let's look at Attorney General. Who do you see yep. shaping up there as as yep. as out of the box, ready to rock? I see a bunch of House Republicans <laughs> running for AG. <laughs> okay. I believe we're up to what six at this point. Uh, your, your guess uh, is as good as mine. Yeah, it's a, it's a bunch of them. And then you've got Ashley Moody, who, of course, as we all know, was a judge uh, in the Tampa Bay area, mm -hmm. has the backing of uh, of Pam Bondi, the current Attorney General, and is is doing pretty well in the fundraising department. Right. Uh, at, in terms of out of the box, ready to rock. I think you've got to look at Sean Shaw, the Democratic representative from Tampa as well. Uh, he has the Democratic field right now all to himself. I know there's been talk about Jack Seiler, mm -hmm. uh, the mayor of Fort Lauderdale, uh, Fort Lauderdale running as well. But I think at this point, if you're Sean Shaw, you're, you're sitting pretty because you're looking over at the Republican primary uh, where they're about to begin trading barbs in an effort to get into the poll position. Right. Um, so he, he's, he's in pretty good shape at this point. Um, because obviously he doesn't have any right. any democratic right. opposition. Okay, let's go to the uh, agriculture commissioner's race. Right. I mean, it's the first time you've really had a race happening in that in most of our modern memory, right? Right. So, uh, so you've got Denise Grimsley, mm -hmm. uh, the senator from uh, uh, down in uh, Glades County, I believe. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, it, you've got uh, Matt Caldwell, of course, Matt Caldwell, who was in the House leadership uh, and who presumably will have the backing of Speaker Corcoran, which mm -hmm. goes a long way. Um, and you've got a number, you know, number of other folks right. who've been looking Baxter at jumping Troutman, into that race as who, well. Who, Baxter who's, Troutman, who's in, tied to the Ben Hill Griffin uh, and, family, and arguably right. could self-fund. Right. Uh, and so, and so that'll be an interesting one too. You know, typically it's a lower-tier race. 
right. on the Florida ballot. Uh, but uh, but I think people have, be, have realized over the past a uh, couple of decades since we had the cabinet reorganization, just how powerful this position is, right. because you're not just the agriculture commissioner, you're on the state cabinet, you're on the clemency board as well. Right, right. Okay, so so let's then look at CFO, uh, the, the exalted in the Ooh. top of everyone's mind every day, but this is the chief financial officer of Florida, and it's yep. basically, it's tough to get press when everything is going right, because there's right. not much to report, but you got CFO uh, Patronus, who is running, and then you've got Senator Ring. How, how do they match up, and who else is in the mix? And we might have Tom Lee. That's right. That's uh, right. From, from what I hear. Right, so you've got Jimmy Petronas, who, who, let's keep in mind, was appointed by Governor Scott to this mm -hmm. position um, and was uh, criticized at the time uh, that he was appointed for not knowing enough about the office itself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yes, he's a businessman. Yes, he's run a restaurant uh, in Panama City. Very good food, by the way, Captain mm -hmm. Anderson's. Yes, I, I, oh, yes. Let me tell you, I love the bass. Agree. It's terrific. <laughs> uh, but, but he had been criticized for not knowing nearly enough about what the office does and right. not having the experience to be CFO. And so I think you're going to hear that line uh, from Tom Lee uh, should he enter uh, the race. Right. So, and, and again, while it might be a lower tier race, people understand just how powerful that position is right. when you look at uh, its role in the cabinet. Right. Okay. So, so as we look at the elections and as we are, are facing so many important issues, we're going to move on to something that's even more important than that. Right? The press we are the no? Florida Internet and Television uh, group here, so we're going to ask you, when you are not reporting on the Capitol oh. and bringing those messages to the viewers, what does Troy Kinsey like to stream to take your mind well, off it? What else but Bay News 9 and News 13, right, Brad? I've got the, <laughs> the, uh, I've even, got right? the Spectrum app at home. Right. Uh, and so I obviously I have to be a company man in that regard. Okay. Uh, but I also... Other than that. Other than that, well, you know, I'm a, I'm a commercial pilot now. Got right. my commercial pilot certificate a right. few weeks ago. So I want... Congratulations. Uh, thank you. I appreciate right. that. We'll go for flights sometime. Look if, forward uh, to it. We'll have the cameras with us. We'll do it. Yeah. Sounds good. Great. Well, you've, yeah. got, you've got the camera equipment. That's, that's true. for that's sure. That's true. So I like to watch a lot of flying videos as well. Right, right. Well, I love that. Okay. So, um, so <laughs> when you're not streaming, excuse me, when you're not streaming and you get ready to go back to the Capitol, what's the thing you're going to look for in this next week? I mean, what do you look for in the next nine days of session, if that's well, as short as it is? You know, again, I think you have to look at the gun violence uh, uh, prevention issue. Mm -hmm. uh, we thought that, that most of the focus uh, would be on those protests on Wednesday last week when the students came up and they protested both uh, outside and inside the state right. capitol. But I'll tell you this week, the parents uh, are in right. town. Uh, we had uh, uh, Philip Levine, candidate for governor, governor, Democratic candidate for governor, who chartered about 10 buses and brought a couple of thousand people up to rally right. uh, on Monday. And I think these rallies are going to continue all the way through the end of the session, which is, uh, I, is a phenomenon I, I have not seen before in my 12 years of covering the Capitol. really is intriguing to watch. Well, as president of the Florida Press Corps, we thank you for, for coming over. And we know our viewers will turn to all the members of the Press Corps for the latest up to date and uh, follow everybody on Twitter. But we're going to ask the same of our followers. Troy, thanks for coming by. Thank we you, Brad, you. as always. We'll see you at, uh, for the 2019 Press Kits. You know How about we that? Will. Coming so that's all the time we have for today's show. Thanks for tuning in. But before you go, make sure you hit us up on our Twitter and Facebook feed at FL Internet TV. For now, thanks for tuning in.